Hey farm fans, how's it going today? It's been a long day, but a warm day, finally. So this evening here we can work with the door open and we're gonna start looking at our auction purchase, our lime fertilizer spreader. So the only thing that I've done so far, as far as kind of a repair, just to, to show you is I bought a new jack for it. That fit right on the jack stand that was there so I didn't have to do any modification. So that's been the only thing I've done to it that you guys haven't seen yet. I did find quite a few issues starting at the front here. Somebody has this little grade five bolt in here, which is really the only thing that's kind of holding the hitch assembly on here. So this is gonna have to come out. We're gonna have to see if we have to drill a bigger hole or you know get this fit better. And we'll be putting a grade eight bolt in there. So there's that to do. And of course, all this silly apparatus is coming off for the handle that operates the spreader because uh, it's, it's ground driven. So what I've done is I bought a a hydraulic cylinder and a whole bunch of hose because I got to go all the way to the front but this machine the spreader is able to take hydraulics from here to here so my cylinder I got one that was probably four or five inches longer than what it actually should have been I didn't want to get one too short so what we'll have to do is maybe grind those off and slide this bracket back in the little channel here as far as it'll go and hopefully that'll That'll get us where we need to be. The end of this is adjustable here. So we'll, we'll probably bring that back quite a bit too. And I think we can shorten it enough. So uh, also we have these chains. This one's too tight. That one's too loose. And you know, I've, I've tried to do some research on this to, to see what other ones look like. And this is kind of the oldest one that I've seen a lot of the ones online are from the mid 2000s this one i think is from 1998 because it appears to me that uh the first numbers in the serial number are when it was manufactured i'm not 100 percent on that but i'm pretty sure so i think this thing was built in uh, september of 98 and the oldest ones i could find were from like the mid 2000s so it, the construction of this is a little different than the ones that I can find because there's no there's no tensioners for the chain so but again that one's loose needs to be tightened that one needs to be lengthened so we're gonna do that I, I bought some new chains this is sort of an adjustment for flow it's a box that kind of slides in and out there is a smaller little box over there I think that's more for fertilizer this would more be for lime but uh, we need to, there's a bracket that would come out of there and connect onto here. So we got to take care of that. And not a whole lot other than, you know, we're going we're gonna to cut some of this stuff out of here. We're going to patch all that so we don't have to worry about it. But here's, I bought some beginnings of some angle iron and, and metal. I have some more over there in my scrap pile to kind of start working on that. But here was uh, some chain I bought, just tractor supply, some connector links. So I figure I'll just put brand new chains on both of them so I can fit them kind of appropriately. So, but uh, the first repair that we're actually going to start on, on this spreader, the first repair is the apron chain. Uh, let me see here quick. Can I show you? Probably from the front is best. There's also the axle uh, that is going to need some reinforcement. Things are getting pretty rusty under here. So let's take a look. You can see there used to be a beam going across on top of that axle that's completely rusted away. So we're going to have to replace that, uh, you know, beef all that up. But the first thing I want to look at, and I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but the apron chain. You can see on this side how much higher it is than that side. That side is actually drooping down. So that says that that side is looser than this side, or this side is tighter, whichever way you want to look at it. So there is the option here on the front corners to tighten this up. 
you know, somebody put like a big bolt on here with the bearings. So you could tighten that up. But what I found out is that on the side that's loose, which would be this side, I measured from there to roughly the center of the shaft here. And this is already forward more than that side. So somebody already tried to adjust this to take the slack up. So either something is bent or we might get lucky back here on this roller shaft back here. So what I did back here was the same thing. The center of the shaft here, I measured to the box. I was able to sneak the tape measure through there and around. So I measured this on this side and I did the same thing on this side. I measured from the center of the shaft to the box. The dimension on this side, center to box, is larger than the dimension on that side. So what I'm kind of hoping maybe happened here is you can see some remnants of some old, you know, rusty metal or something that was there. I'm thinking somebody replaced this bearing and didn't put it back in the spot that it originally was. So I'm hoping by taking these bolts out and sliding this bearing unit forward so it matches the same dimension from center of the pin to box as the other side, I'm hoping that the droop in the apron chain underneath will be the same. So I'm, I'm kind of hoping that's what's going to fix it. And then from there to actually take the slack out, because obviously at that point it would be, uh, it would be too loose. Then we can come to the front and we can tighten them evenly. But I think that'll solve the problem. I hope it solves the problem, but I'm not sure. So if it doesn't solve the problem, then this thing is really tweaked or twisted or something. And I don't know how much use I'm going to get out of it before I send it on down the road because I am not like completely ripping the thing apart or <laughs> rebuilding it. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is get some wrenches on here and just get these bolts out and then see if we can just push this forward, get the dimension, and then we'll look underneath and see what it looks like. So uh, I'll set you guys up and I won't film every last little detail, but I'll show you bits and pieces and I'll show you when I get that moved. Uh, all right, almost eight minutes of me rambling on. Hope everybody's still awake. Okay, so it's day two of this wonderful project. I only spent, uh, I don't know, a couple hours last night working on it. And this is what I've done so far. On this side, I've ended up taking the uh, one of the drive chains off that runs the apron. The bolts are out of this bearing here. So that's loose. And uh, I had both the bolts out here. That one's loose too. But, uh, you know, originally I measured from there to the center of that pin there and it was different on one side than the other. So I thought by moving this bearing forward, it would match the other side, but that didn't help. And it also threw it out of square inside of here. So something obviously is messed up here. So I took 
this side off thinking I could play with this side a little bit and see if I could pull this side backwards because if you remember earlier in the video um, this is the side of the chain that's sagging underneath not that side so I tried pulling this back I actually put a strap on it to pull it back and I moved a decent amount but it didn't uh, didn't look like it did anything underneath um, it didn't lift the chain um, underneath at all so so my next step is I'm actually going to take this apron chain off which should be fun and I'm gonna lay it out on the floor I'm gonna make sure when it's out on the floor that it is straight and it didn't get stretched or bent uh, in such a way that is is causing it to uh, be longer on one side than the other which would cause that sag underneath if that apron chain is good then it means that obviously these sprockets are out of square with each other and uh, it'll be easier to fix with the chain off anyway so that's where I'm headed now and I'll update you as I go okay I'm back so I got this apron chain out you can see it's missing there and uh, got it on the floor over here when it's laid out on the floor it does not look bad um, it's very flexible side to side I didn't think it would be quite quite that flexible so at first it was hard to tell if there was an issue with this chain so what we did um, I had someone come help me and we each grabbed an end of the chain and we pulled it tight and you could very clearly see a sag on the left side no matter how tight we pulled it there was a sag on the left side so I think what has caused that um, there's some spots here like this one that's there's broken there's a couple bent ones and then you come down here and there's more broken and bent ones so I think over time what has happened is with that breaking and whatnot the, the one side is just kind of stretched out so it's not actually the rollers they're a little bit out of whack but not bad they can be fixed now but that has to be replaced and uh, so I just I got off the phone with the guys um, about ordering some some parts and I called the company and I have to call one of their dealers to actually order the parts but uh, right now he thought the chain was going to be about a thousand bucks to replace that and probably going to replace this front roller he said all the new models now do not have sprockets on them they're smooth he said the chains operate better that way so we'll probably order that and then I have to decide what I want to do with this sprocket this is supposed to be 36 teeth and it's 40 so it would slow the apron down some so I have to decide whether I want to leave that or swap that out um, and then uh, I also was able to get a part number off that chart which you can see you can't read some of the stuff that's here they still make that chart no problem so and uh, there's a few other parts they're supposed to be down here in this rusty mess that I got to fix uh, there's this chute in here that's adjustable in and out and on the side of the machine there's supposed to be numbers you know every so many inches or whatever and that is one of the numbers that is up here on this chart for you to adjust it so you can still get that so um, some of the stuff is a little pricey but at least you know I was happy to find out that at least you could still get the stuff even though it was an older machine I gave him the serial number and he was able to look up most of the stuff pretty easily and some of the other stuff I had to come out and measure because there was multiple parts available so so that's kind of where we're at right now uh, probably make this like a part one it's temporarily kind of tore apart I'm gonna have to order some parts for it and uh, once those come in we'll probably work on a part two so that's where I'm at I still have the metal work to do on it uh, obviously the chain and a bunch of other stuff to do so 
there's at least going to be a part two, maybe a part three to this. I'll try not to drag it out, but again, try and keep the videos a little bit shorter. So thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. I appreciate if you hit that subscribe button, help me out there. And if anybody has one of these spreaders or something very similar, this is a Newton Crouch, by the way. Um, and you have any experiences with them or, you know, tips, tricks, whatever to fixing it, running it, leave them down in the comments, help me out. And uh, again, everybody, I uh, appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next video.